Kodaks. In the bottom left, in the red, the color of passion. My insanity reigns. That's what I have for him. That's what I have. You guys don't have any passion. <laughs> Uh, in the upper right, in the yellow. In the color of what? Urine. He is. <laughs> Gina Greenwings, look. That's you've you've had a few too many vitamins that day. But that's a color. <laughs> you urine. need to hydrate better, tasteless. Yeah. Drink some more water, bro. Well, I think like. <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, uh, if you're dehydrated, your urine gets more of a dark yellow. But if you have like a super amount of like vitamins in you or something, it yeah, becomes a brighter yellow. I think yellow. it's an excess of like B vitamins or something in your Might system. Be, it something becomes like, like neon. Because I've had both. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Welcome to the studio, friend. Thank oh. you for coming down here. That guy's French. I can tell by his hat and the people on his sign. And the stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming down to the studio. If you're watching at home, you can come here for free. And the only exception to that rule is, yes, people at home, you would have to put clothes on. That's the only thing that would make it different, because I know most of you guys are probably sitting at home naked, watching streams. Certainly. Probably thinking about doing something like, oh, i got to mow the lawn, but I just can't deal with this right now. <laughs> you know? i got to mow the lawn, that, but I just probably, can't put on pants. The trash can next to your computer just has a little bit too many Kleenexes at the top, and it's starting to fall over, but you're just like, I can't deal with this yet, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I need you. at least my second cup of coffee, and maybe I'll finish this game before I, you know, start the day. That's fair. You got to treat yourself, you know? Yeah. Life's too short to go mow the lawn. I hate it. Let me tell you something. Grass is supposed Here's, to be tall, man. That's like how you know, nature intended it. Th th there are some disadvantages to living in a, an Asian megacity like Seoul. I mean, you know, the pollution, uh, you know, sound, uh, lots of lots of noise. Yeah. You don't always get a good night's sleep. But you know what you don't have to do living in an Asian megacity? Is mow your lawn? As Actually, a kid who grew up in a suburb, oh god, I yeah. hated mowing my lawn. And I have to, I have to echo this because just living in an apartment building overall, I don't ever have to shovel, I don't ever have to mow, I don't ever have to rake leaves. Yep. Uh, you know, I don't have to. There's like a whole huge amount of things I just don't ever have no, to do. No, I don't even think I don't about have it. To, and let me get this straight, guys. I don't actually ever want to mow the lawn, but it was my mom. She's like, you got to mow the lawn. And I'm like, look, I don't care if the grass is like a foot high and people think we sell meth here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't care. Absolutely. I, don't, I do not want to go outside and, and do this. Dude, in New Hampshire, the, the worst was uh, because so many trees in our yard. When it became like time to rake up all the leaves right before winter, Oh God! Or right Making after leaves, winter, if yeah. we miss that, like it's just insane. Like a bajillion pounds of leaves, and a dry, a dead leaf doesn't actually normally weigh that much. But when you leave it like over the winter, and they're all kind of wet at the yeah, bottom, and like nasty, it's heavy, and, like yeah. Oh man, forget that. Those For were the worst days. What else do we not have to do out here in Seoul? Because we still have a little bit more downtime here. What, uh, what, what, what is the other crappy housework? You could, I mean. You know, the appeal for a lot of people around the world, um, for places like the United States, a lot of people want to live there, is that you have these, these giant houses. Yeah. I mean, massive houses. Um, is this lane going to see the robo? Oh! No! No. no. Okay. That's so important. This build is still in the, in the dark. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you have a big house like that, there is this degree of, of house maintenance mm -hmm. that you just have to partake in, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Uh, but a lot of that you don't have to do living in apartments. That's true. I like living in an apartment. Yeah, look at this. Denying all the scouts on this robo, that's so important. Because yeah, anytime really you see is. a robo this early, that, I mean, it's almost every time going to be some sort of all in play, whether that's going to be like a massive gateway warp in with sentry drop or an immortal push, more likely. It's, well, it, we have you a, don't we very have a, often go into a third base off of a robo. We got a uh, warp prism coming in here now. You know, and that's kind of funny, because it was used to not always expected. be Robo in a third base, like way yeah. back. Hmm. And here comes the gateway wall. That's going to be certain. Is he going to clog this, though? Oh. oh. That's a little I think bit Rogue kind of like, oh, OK, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll attack that. Don't let him see that warp prism, though. Yeah, definitely not. All right, just chases those lings back. And uh, well, I guess. You know, he's not making anything else out of his robo yet. It's kind of interesting. Well, you can see it was not entirely clear to Rogue what's going on. He's got spores. Oh, uh, look at this. Look at this two Stargates. 
Who oh, did wow. this recently? Someone just did this. Was it Young Hua? Maybe? Uh, I actually, I don't think it was Young Hua. I saw I, on King Sejong Station? Like, uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm not sure. But hold up. Let's see. What is... Oh, cool. Yeah, that is nice. Oh, this is cute. Yeah, and that's like very easy to force field. If you don't have anything yeah. ranged, you can't do too much against that. It just denies some Look at that. I guess this bit. is something that you could sort of do, guys. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. I really like that. What a cool move for this map. You know, if you're Zerga and this happens to you, I know that you're going to have one of these moments. Like, this guy's not even good. This is some stupid strategy. It's not even supposed to work. But oh, this, uh, this is the type of stuff that I love. Yeah. I love stuff It's like very this tactical. So much. Yeah, and it's like, well, this map happens oh, at this little spot. That's, it's pretty fun. Oh. Well, not for the Zerg, but I mean, it's a cool. Oh, last second much? <laughs> Well, uh, he's got two Void Rays he's pumping out here. Is he going Sky Toss with this? I don't know. I'm, I'm, like, not, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Oh, he actually could go back over to this location. The yeah. lanes are not there. He doesn't know that, though. Mm. He wants to be careful. They're all getting the red. It's better to not lose sentries, I would say, than to harass slightly more. Ooh, okay, that's Okay, nice. cancel here. Yeah. He just doesn't have anything there to stop this. If only he had, like, two sentries there, he would have been fine, but... God, yeah. That's a great wow. move by Rogue. Really, last second cancel there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> last second much? Last second much? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Yeah, that's really good. That's a sign of a quality commentator right there. Yeah, that's... That's how <laughs> you do things... <laughs> I'm not going to explain it. It's good, though. <laughs> yeah, look at this. I mean, he's getting a lot of Void Rays. We do have Hydralisks on the way here. He's getting his range. And the Colossus tech is like a... a I guess a little bit later than it could be based on like the type of build he's using, but I don't know. It, I've never really seen exactly this build, so this is this is pretty it's cool. It's interesting and exciting, for this man. map too because they are, um, you know, it's cross spots here. So y you look at this, and I, I wonder is Sky Toss actually effective in a spot like this? Sometimes Sky Toss I feel like is better um, in some of these rotationally symmetric maps, and you're both hugging a side, and you can kind of come in and poke. I agree with that, but I don't think this is a full-on oh. Sky Toss. This is like. Um, Oh, wow. Wow. I thought for sure that wasn't going to get away. Um, I don't think this is a full-on Sky Toss. He's only made four Void Rays, and that's like how many he had last game. Is this something weird to force out Hydras, and then he can yeah, go back into a it, normal comp and just push in? It could be. Like The thing is, four Void Rays are always good. Like It's always good at four Void Rays. Those are very useful against Roaches and Corruptors and sure. Buildings. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, it's a very solid Even really unit. basic stuff, like driving out an Overlord that's in yeah. one of these weird corners. The thing that's getting me is that both games, he added two Stargates and made four Void Rays. And let's think about the history of Rain. In the past, Rain has actually solved <coughs> unit compositions for matchups. He has yeah. done this before. This, where this might be a technical unit additional comp. Or he's like, well, yeah. obviously in the perfect armor, you need four Void Rays. It absolutely yeah. could be. He's yeah. done stuff like that in the past. So... And, like, he figured out PvP before Heart of the Storm came out. He figured out exactly how many Colossus and Immortals you needed on each map. It was insane. Like, he just beat everyone. He's like, oh, no, I, I understand completely. Uh, <laughs> it was, like, weird because he knew so much more than everyone else. But, like, the fact that he's gotten four both times is intriguing me to no end. Yeah. I am just, like, completely wiggly and excited. And the fact that he gets them so early, like, getting two Stargates to get them. Because you could by now he could have four off one. But he's decided to get four right away, and I think it has something to do with what you're saying. You see these voids, you make extra hydras. Yeah, and, and the hydras die Im immediately yeah. to Colossi uh, Thermolance. That's really cool, man. This is really cool. And also think about this, too. I mean, let's say that Zergit's Corruptors, for instance, they're, they're, they're going to try to kill the mm. voids first, right? Voids don't die that fast. Uh. Um, and even then, that's a, that means maybe the Colossi have you know, three or four more volleys that they get off. Mm. Against the Hydras that you force a Zerg to make, which are already ineffective. But but look at this. He's actually going for a quick hive. So I think he's going straight into Vipers, which theoretically in my mind right now, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, well, that seems pretty awesome as a counter, right? Because yeah, well, those are good against Voids, Colossus, Protoss in general. Sure. And obviously Rain spent a lot of gas to get all this, but Rain already has t High Templars out. So very interesting stuff, man. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Uh, we might have a timing attack here from uh, Rogue. He stopped the void, uh, excuse me, not the void, the warp prism harass. Uh, and he might actually just come in here and bludgeon the third base. I don't know if um, Protoss can hold this. Hmm. How many sentries does he actually have? 
I'm not 100% clear on that, because oh. yeah, he had to skimp on something here. Yeah, it looks like he has like three or four. Storm just barely not done. It probably will finish by the end of this battle. And we don't really... Okay, there we go. Some good forest fields coming down. And uh, I guess Protoss actually holds this. Yeah, am I mistaken here well, with the force fields? How many sentries does he have now still on the low ground? Are they all dead? This, it, he's about to have Psystorm. Okay, it's Psystorm now, so he will end up holding here. And he actually saves his Colossi, and that's really all that mattered there. Oh my god. That was sick. What? I Three can't believe points? that. I can't believe that. Oh, that's where I pause the game and I tell him, kill your Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually done that before. <laughs> That's um, like just unlucky. That, okay, Three we've seen this happen at RGS games before. Occasionally the player will overextend. Sometimes they'll get in there and actually do it and kill it. But you got to be careful because we've seen people just run in with more and more lings and roaches and it actually fails and then they lose. He needs to literally make a building wall around it and chrono it for probes. Yeah. Like that is that is the answer here. Um, but wow, that was a very strong hold by Rain. It seems like Rogue was a little... like I guess he had a big concave and those units couldn't hit anything but the Nexus, so it was fine. Oh, that was sick! No! Oh! I'm just, that was so sick! Yeah, that that sellout wall was insane. Rain is so. That's good. where I don't cast. I just scream. Well, that's appropriate. That artistically that's the appropriate captures thing to do. the moment. If I had to rate your casting, it was a hundred percent right yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, that was that a true form of casting. Casting with a capital uh, T or look C. At, excuse me. Look at how good Rain is. It's like actually just silly. That zealot wall was so sick. God. All right, now here's the thing he should I get. I will get that next. Give me that. <laughs> well, hold on. Let's see. Is, is he gonna get this just right? I mean, it's uh, like a pretty good surround. He's actually just. Well, he hasn't killed a colossus yet. This is a lot of damage. I mean, considering it's a surround, I gotta say, it's did a lot of damage to that zerg army. Mm. Uh, and the, the three colossus are not actually dead, <laughs> which is. That's true, but you know what? He's killed that Nexus off, and Rain's army is like kind of podunk here, right? It's got like well, just some Colossus. He has no real backbone with it. He's got to get the Roach Warren. Is he got to get the Roach Warren? That's too bad. This he is didn't a get funny that. game. <laughs> I was gonna say if he got the Roach Warren, maybe, maybe um, in that time that he couldn't make Roaches, he would have a weaker army. You know, because mm. he can't get Hydra Ling against Colossus, and the three yeah. Colossus still remaining. Exactly. I don't know. That's actually, that's well said, because the Roaches are the scary unit right now, for sure. Yeah. Which is why he's actually making Immortals. He realizes that. Uh, all right, Blink is about to finish. He's about to have plus three attack as well, so those are pretty gigantic upgrades that he's he's finishing up here. But this is a very well-upgraded army from Rogue, all with 2-2. Two -two. He's getting some uh, Vipers out to go with it as well. And Rogue's got a good four-base economy, whereas Rain, you know, he's sitting on three, so... This is all. This is all good. By uh, Rogue is still doing a very good job, and he, let's not forget he got unlucky not killing that next. That next got extra minutes of mining time. Yeah, it did. Like two minutes or something. Well, even the second attack, he sent Roaches in there and didn't yeah. get it. You know. Um. Well, this is interesting. We have a counterattack. Oh, that was nice. Really nicely done. Hmm. Um. He's gonna run up here into the main. This is very annoying for yeah. Rain. I think actually Rogue can win this game. Yeah. I think he certainly can win this game. Certainly, it does look that way. Uh, oh God, Storm's pretty good here. It's really right, going now. hard on these uh, Nexus. Yeah, he should get this one. Yeah. Well, that's another strong kill there. But uh, let's not forget, Rogue is still just on four bases. Well, four bases is like what you need. If he was on three bases doing this, he's already dead. But uh, he's still kind of layer tech. You know, yeah. the only hive tech he's really invested in is some Vipers, which is obviously very good, but he's still using layer tech units. So that's like something where Rain keeps working on his unit comp, he keeps not losing these Colossi, and he can still absolutely win the game. Like, this is... what This is a really weird and very interesting game for sure. It is. Um, now, I wouldn't count Rain out um, because he's just very crafty at playing uh, in, the, in the defensive spot, but... Rogue did a really good job. Rogue uh, powered up and is just shutting down um, opportunities everywhere on the map here for Rain. It's usually a bad sign when Protoss is, is having to fix and repair stuff back at home mm -hmm. and try to get back on their feet while Very Zerg true. has creep all over the map. I mean, that's... Yeah, and he's, he is It sounds common base, sense, but I mean, you, we see a lot of games where it looks like it might be closer than it is when, in fact, it's just Protoss has never really gotten to move out on the map at all. That's, that's actually you a know? very good observation because that is kind of what's going on. 
And again, the only thing that's really kind of holding them together is that this is still Roach Hydra based. Protoss, like, it's, it's not just about surviving in a lot of ways. It's about actually getting out there and shutting stuff down, you know? Um, oh my god, those storms are getting some value. Uh, okay, well the Stalkers come up here, blink in front. Uh, looks like the Kruppers will get the remaining Colossi. Mm. But this attack was, it was held off here. Uh, look at the supplies, that's a better way to understand this yeah. situation, right? Yes, uh, Rogue lost his whole army there, but 92 supply to 154. And keep in mind, with Zerg, you know, as long as they're on top of their larva injects, they just shoot out mm -hmm. a ton of larva uh, easily, and they can max out so much faster than the other races. Now, this is... It's also, looking like Rain is not going to be able to hold again. Like, I think that he has no splash damage, no real splash damage left. Yeah, just the, those Archons, but that's not going to be enough. Yeah. You need to have uh, Colossi and... Storm, stuff like that. Yeah, it, he doesn't even have any sentries to try to zone out this really beefy, strong army. And, and there's actually three two upgrades already done for Rogue, so he's even winning in the upgrade war here. So it's uh, it's pretty tough. He has gotten some Psy Storm mixed in here now. He is making Immortals. So I guess there's still a chance, you know. Uh, it's hard, though. Rogue definitely in control right now. Oh, um, no. That was taken care of pretty easily. This sucks for uh, Rain because Rogue can expand in either direction now. Yeah. Uh, either side of the map is fine. Rogue's got complete control. Rain really hasn't been moving out on the map like you were saying. It's, yeah. He's been playing. And this is not one of those single player uh, campaign missions, guys, where you have to survive for 30 minutes so that, you know, before Tassadar comes and saves everybody. <laughs> well, if you saw the Colossus, that would be what it is, but <laughs> definitely <laughs> not. Definitely not here. Some, I mean, these storms, he can't really attack in there. That's a he's lot of He's actually just baiting storm. out storms. He's milking the energy out here. He and is. it's actually forcing, what's funny about it is it's forcing Archons to be made, uh -huh. which are not actually useful unless the battle is continually going on. Um, he kicks kind of these Archons over the front, which means then the Immortals over here die. And there's really nothing here um, that can fight directly a mm -hmm. Zerg army. Stalkers alone, unless you have a massive lead, don't really help. Yeah. So I think what Zerg does here, it's a strategy called holding down the R key. Um, <laughs> oh, he did it. Yeah, look. look 31 this, is called, this is called holding down the R key, guys. It's a very uh, yeah. complex strategy. It's, it's probably a guide about Team Liquid somewhere. Yeah, there's somewhere around. You, don't even, like, you might be one of these guys that has, oh, I hit R 31 times. Well, let me tell you something. The best of the best, they just hold that key down. That's true. And um, then you have a bunch of roaches, and you win the game. Well, a couple of very good storms, but it's not going to matter. He does not have the beef here to hold on against such a mass of roaches in such a concave. And uh, Rogue is going to end up taking this game, even after a few kind of unlucky things that went on. But this game was, like, really good and really interesting, Tasteless. Yeah, I enjoyed like, it. I, I was totally, I'm so intrigued by the four Void Rays. GG. Into like regular-ish play. Yeah, that was cool. I don't know if that was something that let Rogue get a lead there. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, it is true that um, the four Void Rays were out, but that, I mean, he almost lost that Nexus back there. Um, he should have lost the Nexus the first time. Well, he should have, but he didn't. Yeah, he um, didn't, but like, that was even Rogue getting a little bit unlucky and still coming back and winning. Yeah. Because he, like, then he spent those extra units trying you know, to get it, and that didn't work, and it was like, oh, God. What, what I'm going to be looking for in this next game is, uh, are we going to have the double Stargate Void Ray, four Void Ray tech again? It's also a little bit weird, right? It's two Stargates, um, and then just four Void Rays. Yeah, it's... No normally, when you think two Stargates, you think, okay, he's making air units the entire game. Um, you normally do. I actually was studying specifically that recently, uh -huh. uh, and I used PvP as an example for players that go double Stargate to just get like uh, five or six Phoenixes out very quickly after someone else opened Phoenix to try to catch them off guard with those, but yeah. they don't really want more than that. And like, I think it's worth the extra gas and minerals to just get the units out quicker so that they have the immediate effect a lot of the time. And I think that's, I think that's what that was. I, very interesting stuff, though. It's one and one. We're going to go on to match number three here.